uh, start then this webinar. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I hope you all arrive now or by now, or uh, those that join, very welcome here today in a webinar uh, um, on the on the situation. I think it's uh, it's touching everyone, the COVID nineteen, and we'll have an interesting chat. Uh, how to how we here at Skilled were leading through and are still leading through this uh, situation, and we go beyond. We look at best HR and uh, practices within that time. So um, today's speakers, well, first of all, uh, it's uh, the first time that Nico and myself, we have the, uh, the pleasure to really uh, put a webinar together, uh, the two of us. So um, my name is Mike, uh, I'm one founder, and then there's Nicholas Pickett, the other founder. Maybe Nico, you give also a word. Yeah, it's a, it's a very um, a big pleasure to be uh, with you and uh, and presenting today uh, this uh, well co-hosting this uh, this webinar. Um, it's a very interesting topic, and I think uh, many uh, of you will find it very relevant. Um, and yeah, well, let's uh, let's let's yeah. bring you to the next level. Yeah, one last point. Maybe you cannot see Nico, so uh, 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 he's hiding his haircut. No, I'm just kidding. Um, of course, uh, we have some camera issues there, so that's unfortunate. So you might see me at this stage, but unfortunately just here, Nico, we'll hope to make that better on the next webinar. But for now, uh, we take what we get. So um, that's on I'm not going anywhere. You know, you cannot see me, but don't worry, I'm there. <laughs> there, and we can hear you. So, um, well, a quick, uh, a quick point on the software. Um, as most of you might know, um, we are um, a SaaS company. So we provide a talent acquisition software. Our main core uh, focus uh, has always been on the applicant tracking, on the personality evaluation tests, and on the video interviews, uh, all driven by a very complex AI uh, system behind. Um, however, we, we, we are now bringing more and more modules like uh, employer branding, talent sourcing to the market. Uh, we were expecting a new V3 uh, a couple of weeks ago, but due to the situation, we decided internally to wait uh, a bit longer uh, and uh, let the HR uh, departments focus on this situation before bringing a new change, before bringing new functionalities into our software. But uh, it will come and we're very excited about that. But uh, that's just a point on us. Um, before we really hit into this webinar, a couple of things first. Um, this webinar will be recorded. Uh, so you will get the recordings afterwards. That's a nice thing. So you can rewatch it for those that join later or for those that uh, today have not had the time uh, to see it. Uh, we will have, uh, uh, of course, a chat box. You can see the chat box there. Feel free at any moment to, um, yeah, to, to ask us questions, Nico, myself, uh, and our guest today. I will introduce him uh, very soon. Uh, and finally, share share this uh, on the social media. We need your support as well. Um, and I think these practices that we, and all the topic in general that uh, uh, we discussed today might be interesting for many other people. So feel free to share it with the hashtag skilled webinar on your social media. Well, that brings me uh, to uh, an introduction. Of course, the COVID has um, hit us all, uh, personally or professionally. I think today we'll more have a look on the professional side. I think uh, at the time where um, companies really realized what uh, what what happens, uh, well, the employees were becoming into came into focus. Um, people had to work suddenly from home, so uh, the people that run companies uh, were suddenly. Uh, working from different places and I think the HR teams have and still are making an amazing job to coordinate and to make it all happen. So the HR teams really came into focus as well. They were very much charged with this and um, the challenges were extraordinary. So and we saw that with our clients, but we heard also from our networks that there was a lot of challenges to overcome. And I think this webinar is mainly focused on also looking at best practices in these times and um, yeah, how to how to how to come over this uh, situation. Uh, we also will share some insight of how Nico and I have structured the company, uh, how we have also moved uh, from working in our offices with our people to home working. And so it will be a very exciting chat on all these points. And finally, and also I'm very happy today, and uh, Nico will later introduce uh, Gregory Pilchen. Uh, uh, Gregory is the managing director of EBOS from Luxembourg. They are a leading call center here. Uh, and. Uh, Gregory has decided to opt for a, a digital solution like Skilled in the crisis, during the crisis. And so we had 
uh, a very interesting onboarding and uh, to our software with him and with their team. So they're sharing later in this webinar some insights on that. So I'm very excited uh, that Nico will introduce uh, Gregory further uh, further down this webinar. Great. Yeah, thanks. You, thank you, Mike. Um, and uh, definitely looking forward to have uh, an amazing discussion with uh, with Gregory and uh, and some uh, insights sharing uh, there. So uh, what what I will uh, talk about now is you know uh, dig deeper into you know managing and uh, and engaging employees. As you all know, I mean many companies that have that have, have adopted uh, policies and remote uh, remote work practices. Uh, obviously uh, allowing their employees to work from home in situation where you know their responsibility can manage can be managed off premise um, however uh, as we all know managing and engaging employees in times like this can be very challenging um, so you know that's uh, the, the core uh, part of the topic of today so many um, companies have put in place measures uh, and HR team are on in the front line uh, during this challenging time uh, this is certainly uh, for everyone an opportunity and for HR uh, teams to come around the table uh, with, first of all, I mean, the right communication, uh, that, that, that's really key, uh, no, no, the, the right precautions uh, and the right plans uh, and processes. Because at the end, what counts uh, is that, you know, uh, how you handle the situation really shows um, and finally shows, you know, the importance of HR uh, within the broader organization. I mean, certainly uh, too often the, the, the HR teams are uh, overlooked. I mean, obviously we really praise, you know, the sales team, you know, uh, many, many teams, but, uh, but the HR teams are always, you know, running on the background, doing everything for uh, the organization, but we don't really see them here. They're really on the front line. Um, and, uh, and we certainly see how uh, important they are. So it's also uh, the, the, the moment, you know, to guide leadership teams through a response plan that leaves employees uh, feeling informed, prepared and safe, um, which is really the key to, uh, to everything, you know, safety of employees. Um, but it's also uh, the possibility to mitig mitigate the risk uh, and to avoid negative long term uh, impact on the health of your business and your employees. Um, so now obviously everyone is well aware that uh, you know, the way employees are treated uh, will have an impact on the employer brand uh, once moved out uh, of the pandemic uh, era. So what, what is key, and this is really something that, you know, we care, Mike and I, uh, and the entire organization about is, you know, kindness, compassion, communication, uh, and the transparency, which is key uh, in, uh, in those kind of times. So what's you know, what measures have we at Skills, uh, as Mike mentioned, uh, implemented to keep um, our employees safe? So first of all, I mean, the, the prevention uh, tips and the virus information, informing people as much as possible reading uh, is, uh, is, is was and is still uh, our priority. Uh, we're working remotely, uh, even, uh, I mean, this is a, a, something that we decided very early on, even before uh, most of um the the decisions from the government appeared uh so um this is something that you know we were able to do um and uh we will discuss further uh in our next slides so really be consistent and open uh about the communication towards employees and clients uh what we have done is obviously uh, uh, regular emails, regular uh, video communication, but also uh, share as much as possible uh, information with our customers, uh, which is the key. And typically, uh, one of the example was uh, to send an email to say, you know, uh, and to explain that the V3 was uh, delayed uh, because we didn't want to uh, to uh, to push too much uh, the changes at that stage. But you know, we will dig deeper uh, into this after. And obviously, early travel rec restriction, I mean, cancel non-essential non uh, travel uh, and starting by us too, uh, you know, very early on, I mean, we needed to travel and especially, you know, going to Porto, we, we, we very early on decided uh, to actually stop uh, all travels and we have obviously recommended that to uh, all our teams and that has been going really well. Um, so we are extremely happy. We have contributed to reduce uh, and lower the curve. Uh, so that's uh, that was the key for us. But also, uh, you know, the support from the government know exactly what's going on. It's it's key to to be aware. And the last one is um, so mainly about a, a scenario based action plan. Uh, so communicate to the team on business continuity plans um, and uh, and offer also uh, the the different uh, scenarios, which is really something that uh, we were uh, definitely sharing with our team. 
Okay. Well, uh, thanks, Nico. Uh, indeed. So um, let's bring it back to remote work. I think it's a topic for all of us. The world is working remotely now, and um, of course, it was also a challenge for us. We we had uh, put our people quickly to to work remotely. I think it was a wise choice. Just a quote on that. I remember on the 26th of January, I checked my WhatsApp. I sent Nico a WhatsApp saying, "Oh, there's something coming from." From China, so uh, we better we better keep that in our minds, and uh, and 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 no one spoke about it. So um, and and it was nice to prepare quickly and and to have a vision on where we would go in the worst case, and then we quickly saw that moving on. And I think um, it was a challenge for us, but as we are a tech company, it was also easier because we just basically need our computers to work. Uh, not all of us, but most of us. So um, that was good. And the remote work was put in place fast. And um, we checked also a lot of things to to make this remote work happen in the most safest and most well uh, adapted ways so that our employees have the, the facilities and the, the, the needs uh, to, to work. So um, here are some some points that we put really on the slides to to also make you aware of what is needed. Um, but first, of course, you, uh, first of all, you have, of course, the collaborative tools. Make sure that you have uh, internal chats, internal uh, video conferences on a, on a regular basis. I think uh, the key point is here to stay in touch uh, with your people. Um, physical security of company uh, devices, um, very important. Uh, the people bring uh, their devices home. Uh, that means uh, bringing the company data and the company, well, uh, belongings home. And um, so it's very important that you watch out, for example, that the data is not accessible. Um, we, in our company, we have done a training even on, 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 on how to set up big passwords, how to update your laptops uh, and keep, keep your materials safe uh, for the general uh, for general things that you might even not think of uh, and very quickly you might lose data or information. Also, uh, the home technology environment. Uh, and, and there's also a funny thing. When I was with Nico in the US, we bought both a Google Home and then we were very proud to have this Google Home uh, tool. Uh, and, and then suddenly our, our, our developers told us that they might be listening to, to us. And, and, and so that, that is a good example because you never know what your employees have at home or use at home. So just be aware of, of, of these kind of points. It's very, um, uh, very important because your data might get listened to, might get lost, might get taken. Um, same as the, the company network. I think many, especially big companies have, have a company network. Uh, make sure that how people access there is safe. Uh, also be aware of, of, of these this big uh, scams that went on the, during this period of time where people were using their Wi-Fi from home with a very limited password protection. So training is really something that we did uh, and what we would really su suggest. And on the same time, the tech support, because if people might use laptops, might use um, well the, the tablets and make sure that someone is always available to help the people because not everyone is, is, is adapted to tech and not everyone is really uh, into that. So if there's help needed, uh, make sure that you, you really provide that because it's, it's key. Uh, and then um, moving on, some other key factors. Well, communication, uh, we had it already. I think uh, this is more for managers, I think, and more for your, your the, uh, different departments. Make sure you communicate, make sure uh, also your, your, your managers are, are responsive. Uh, we, have, we have the situation here that sometimes we have different communication channels. For example, we have Slack, that's like what's up for, for companies. Um, and typically when people write uh, me or even Nico, we have this <laughs> topic quite often uh, that we read the messages and then we read something else and something else. And at the end of the day, we, we miss out some messages that might be important. So make sure that you clear uh, that you have a very clear structure on how people should message you on important stuff, on less important stuff. We, we, for example, use emails for very important things with key key subjects, uh, so that we are aware. And for for less important uh, topics, we use Slack. So make sure that works. Same as reporting. I think everyone wants to keep productivity uh, up, but uh, yeah, make sure you have specific reportings for this situation. You are not with the people anymore in the office. So make sure that you're aligned with, with, with what is going on. Um, and, and, and same for the working schedules. I think uh, in some, especially mid-sized to big companies, you had maybe a, um, a, 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 how do you call that? When you when you stamp in, uh, in, in, in a company, make sure that you find a way to, to still 
sort of follow up with that. Um, a bigger teams means, of course, more responsibility to see uh, what the people are doing, um, and and that links also to 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 make them uh, a good work environment from home. I mean. Us at Skilled, of course, we promote a great work environment. We try to make the best for our people. That's uh, that's in our in our identity. Uh, but now they are at home. Uh, I'm not saying that at home it's not good, but you know, uh, and and I'm, I'm giving myself as an example. I was sitting on a chair for this whole time, and it's not comfortable. So I get my my back pain and and, and all of these. Uh, factors that that normally in the office don't happen. So make sure you adapt and you you offer uh, to your people the the good materials that that they um, that they that they need. And finally, also the social the social point um, and 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 the accessibility. What we did here at Skilled and what works very well is e coffee breaks. Uh, and I think uh, Nico and I were very proud of this because it brings the team. Uh, during the week separately together. So we have a team in Portugal, we have a team in Luxembourg. So we have an e coffee break at 11, I think, in Luxembourg and at 11.30 in Porto. So we meet with this, with our people, we, we, we chat, but we chat on different kind of topics and we just chat and we have a good time together. And I think it's very important, especially for this kind of situation. So maybe to find something like this, uh, we also do on Fridays um, an e coffee or bigger coffee coffee together so we chat all together so it's very nice but make sure you give all these uh features or these these um topics of make them available so that you you can collaborate with your teams at least or with your with your entire company depending on the size but that's what we did and i think it works very well make sure that you you keep an eye on the safety uh, of your data and how people use it just to recap on it it's a very important factor make sure that your laptops that you give are updated um we have done a specific training on that and it was very helpful so we can only suggest uh to go that way as well Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, very insightful. Too bad that you have back pains. You, you should have taken your, your chair from the office. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I do my sports. Do my sports <laughs> but uh, not too bad. But I, I will get it. Ah, okay. Um, so, guys, um, obviously, the, the, the impact of the COVID-19 uh, COVID has hit businesses in multiple ways. Um, and talent acquisition is certainly not... Uh, an, ex an exception, uh, you know, your plans uh, to take on more staff uh, surely uh, have gone uh, maybe stop until further notice uh, that that's a very possible uh, thing or uh, on, on the opposite way, you might having to hire uh, more than ever. Uh, and uh, and that's uh, that's something that the company had to plan for. So obviously, wh whatever situation you find yourself in, you know, hiring increase, hiring as usual, hiring freeze, uh, one thing for sure uh, that needs to be taken into consideration is how your company respond to this unprecedented uh, pandemic. Uh, obviously, will define your relationship with you know future hire staff and uh, customers. So, um, what we we have engaged uh, our clients, you know, talent acquisition and human resource leaders to come up uh, with some best practice, you know, to adjust your talent acquisition. Uh, to our new reality. Um, so what what we will do is you know look at each stage uh, of the talent acquisition funnel uh, and really uh, explain you how you can adapt. Uh, so Mike will you know present you more about the awareness uh, and uh, and what we are giving as advice uh, for that stage. Yeah, sorry, I muted. Um, yeah, uh, good uh, indeed. The awareness uh, coming to the awareness is a topic. Uh, that we have here as well. Um, well, the company is currently recruiting on many levels. Uh, Nico, you were recruiting. Uh, it's also my turn now. And I think uh, it's a specific moment uh, to recruit. Uh, why? Because, of course, you have a lot of things going on internally in the company uh, to make this um, transition smoothly uh, of this situation. At the same time, there's jobs open outside um, on, on, on job boards. And this is just... Uh, making you aware of not forgetting those jobs because um, people will still apply, people are looking for jobs, we see it, we see it in the statistics also. Um, there are still people applying and people looking to change jobs and um, you as a company, you are on those job boards and if you're in a transition of change because of the situation, make sure that either you close the job uh, so you freeze your hiring or you go for it. Um, I have the same situation. Um, I'm, I'm setting up an entire new team. Very exciting moments, and maybe some of those, uh, 
yeah, find it find it difficult to apply in those situations, but we, we try our best. Um, you have to be transparent. When I when I currently uh, interview people after they pass through our software, um, what happens is I tell them straight away for when it is. Uh, I, I cannot recruit someone act actively now for the next month that's not in our strategy because we also have to adapt and we did adapt so it is really uh to be transparent to these people they are very exciting to join the project there um they they, they they really want to join your company but make sure that you answer make sure that you are there uh and if you're still hiring uh make sure that it's defined what is your role um uh, when is it really going to be for? How long will you, this role be open? Make sure that internally in your HR department, this is really clear to all the collaborators that are working on these specific jobs. What what skills are you looking for? Because the skills might change due to the situation. Um, we had that certainly here. So we, 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 we might need different skills uh, for certain uh, transition time that will after lead into other skills required. So it's, 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 really, um, it's really about making a check list of, of what you're looking for uh, if you're hiring and finally of course uh, rethink your, your talent pool I think many companies especially those that have digital softwares uh, um, uh, already integrated look at the people that have uh, applied in the past is there interesting competences uh, that are there already uh, and, and maybe recontact these people as well uh, the, the, the internal talent pool uh, can also be the people that are working currently in your company Maybe there's uh, some some people that might want to get a promotion or that might change job. Um, really go for that. Uh, really look what is around you, um, and and specifically watch out for the jobs that are open outside. And uh, in case you are uh, busy with with other specific topics internally uh, or managing this crisis and you don't want to recruit anymore, make sure you close your jobs accordingly. So I mean, we we can uh, only uh, <laughs> repeat it. Uh, more and more, but this is uncertain time for everyone. Um, I mean, your, your candidates and employees uh, will be looking for certainty and reassurance uh, from you, uh, and now more than ever. Um, obviously, you'll want to make a, an extra effort um, to ensure that uh, you communicate clearly and effectively with candidates uh, and hires. For example, uh, and this is kind of advice we're giving. I mean, you should update your website if you have, uh, you know, if you're uh, top notch in tech, you know, update your chatbot and, uh, you know, uh, social media with COVID-19 uh, recruitment uh, FAQs. Um, that's always a good thing to start with. It's not complex to, uh, to, uh, to set up and uh, it really helps. So obviously, ensure that these resources is written in simple and clear language. Uh, avoid, you know, any type of jargon. Um, and you know, what can they want exactly? I mean, they want uh, what is the exact recruitment process steps. I mean, this is uh, bottom line. Uh, but they also want to uh, know uh, how uh, will they uh, be interviewed. Um, they they want to know uh, when they will be interviewed. I mean, this is really basic uh, basic principle, but. I mean, really take this into consideration. What they need to prepare uh, for the interview, and the more information you provide them, uh, the better uh, these interviews are going to go. Um, so, but also what they need to provide in terms of IDs if hired, uh, how and when will they hear from uh, you if they are not hired uh, or if they are hired, uh, and what the onboarding process uh, looks like. So, you know, our rec recommendation is very early on in the process highlight exactly as much information as you can uh, provide them and uh, that will help them uh, project themselves uh, and have a clear uh, next steps. So one example uh, that we, we can give, uh, and <laughs> you have all heard uh, Amazon, they are uh, hiring more than 100,000 people. Yes, you have heard 100,000 people uh, in next coming month. And what they have done is, you know, they, they, they on the career site, you know, they have uh, created, you know, COVID-19 uh, updates and, uh, and, uh, and questions uh, with replies. And, uh, and that has been positively, uh, um, positively received uh, by candidates and has helped them a lot. So that was a short example we wanted to, uh, we wanted to, uh, to, uh, to, to show. So um, if, uh, if you're in the hiring freeze, you also need to be transparent with the candidate uh, already in your recruitment funnel. It's extremely important that you know you, you let them know why, when, um, and at the very least, I mean, send them uh, an email uh, that you won't move move more forward for for the, the current time. Uh, you know, it's 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 it's. 
really important that you know things are uh, clearly high highlighted uh, and candidates are not kept in the dark. So obviously, uh, don't forget your existing colleagues. Uh, for example, if you're taking on a new approach to recruitment, uh, internal stakeholders, uh, so yeah, you're, you're, you're not taken by, they're not taken by surprise. Uh, so that's, that's really something that uh, is, is key. I mean, transparency, transparency, transparency. Okay. Yeah, that, that brings us to uh, the application and selection. Um, I think what we have uh, certainly uh, uh, realized over the over this crisis is the, pop, uh, the popularity uh, specifically of uh, video interviewing i think uh, the the crisis has put the world into a digital world um we have uh, we have seen uh, big big companies uh, um putting everything into video interviewing uh, well we have the conference calls uh, we know all the famous uh, all the famous uh, conference call softwares that are out there, but also in terms of recruitment. And I, I, I talk now in, in the name of, uh, of our clients also uh, that work with Skilled. I think when suddenly um, something like this happens, and for sure that was not foreseeable, but um, the fact of having something in place that allows you to continue your, your job from home uh, was, was a big success uh, when, when you have the video interviews, when you have other tools that are online available and specifically when you before this uh, had a in general uh, strategy of digitalization in place so what we have seen is for example the video interviews of course now you cannot do um, the meetings in, on site anymore so people are shifting indeed towards uh, video interviewing um, it, it's a very interesting uh, tool to to, to see the people at first, we use it certainly, but then of course also in the next steps within the recruitment process, you want to, to move on. So video interviews um, is of course a strong uh, tool to have at this uh, at this time. And it will also be uh, for, for for many uh, a wake up call also on how, how beneficial uh, video interviewing can be uh, when you when you first of all cannot meet people, but also when people are further away, uh, and when it's simply not not the, the easiest to to just meet meet people on place. Um, and then of course you have also the online assessments. The market is full of it. Uh, there's very interesting assessments. You can you can go from the personality to the competences to to uh, motivational assessments. They are online, so the the possibility for you to gather more information on the soft skills of a person. Uh, it's really there. I think it's really something that uh, that helps recruiters to make decision, better decision, uh, more deep decisions. Um, it's also a thing that comes up in the future is gamification. I think uh, combined with video and assessments, uh, where we will see very exciting uh, things uh, coming up uh, in the recruitment process, linked to the recruitment to the recruitment process and specifically also in the vision of skilled where we will implement uh, these modern ways of, of, of helping um, candidates apply, promoting themselves. And finally, of course, very important, make always sure that your, your candidates have clear instructions. Um, I think just telling them, yeah, please make a video and, and, and not everyone is yet ready for, for any kind of software. So um, there's different kind of uh, people that use use the, the softwares. Um, so make sure that you have a, a good explanation. What we do here is we have videos, videos that are explain, explaining exactly what to do. So it's a visual, it's a visual help, uh, helping tool. Uh, we'll also think of, of chatbots where people interact straight away with, 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 uh, with the software to, to get help. And we have the support uh, as well. So make sure that if you use videos and online assessments and people are uh, not aware hundred percent how to use it, make sure that they have the perfect guidance on, on how it works. And if, if I can comment, I mean, one of the way to do that is, uh, you know, be super transparent on uh, on your career page so they know exactly the path, the steps that they're going to go through. Um, and uh, and so they'll be aware, you know, what uh, what is uh, coming from them and uh, or for them and what is asked. And uh, and it's going to be more comforting for them as well. Good. Um, I mean, looking at now hiring and uh, and onboarding, um, you know, once a suitable candidate has accepted um, the, uh, the, the offer, uh, obviously it's still important to apply social distancing measures. Uh, I think that's pretty clear for everyone, but you know, <laughs> I just wanted to emphasize on this. So, uh, where possible, you want to avoid new hires coming uh, into your office. It's very possible, uh, you know, by sending contracts and other, uh, company related, 
uh, materials by email, uh, for example, and ask, you know, can they to sign uh, contracts and other necessary materials uh, digitally? Yes, I mean, his signature is legal and uh, and uh, and is binding. So uh, this is something that uh, you can definitely uh, take into consideration. So yeah, indeed, for example, I mean, replacing physical paperwork with uh, e-document and uh, signature. Good. So uh, once a, a candidate is hired, uh, the onboarding process uh, is becoming virtual too, which is also a challenge. Uh, and, and obviously the biggest change in the, the new management style uh, it requires. So uh, what we believe is onboarding is you know about managing emotion day by day. Uh, and when you're dealing with uh, working remotely, it creates a challenge, uh, especially if the organization is not uh, well prepared for it. So some companies have temporarily given up on onboarding, while others are uh, basically uh, providing new hires with access to online documents and, uh, and a few uh, companies' uh, video. Um, obviously, yet it's possible uh, to deliver proper remote onboarding. Uh, and, you know, we will highlight some areas of focus, uh, including how uh, Skilled is doing it. Um, because obviously, you know, some hires that we have done were planned and, uh, you know, we... Uh, well, we're carrying on uh, hiring them and uh, and onboarding them. It's totally normal. Uh, obviously, it has been slightly different, but uh, but here are a few tips that we will we would like to give. So it's key that uh, your remote workers have the right uh, tech setup uh, and all the software, hardware, uh, and equipment uh, they they'll need to log in with. I mean, this is the the first step. So, I mean, after they have signed, they they, they you need to uh, give them uh, what they need to be able to work. Um, and this has to be planned. Uh, as early on as possible, um, and you know you have your uh, your your IT team and uh, to order their tech equipment uh, ASAP. So regarding uh, the cultural integration, I mean onboarding is all about you know making a new employee feel welcome, um, and there's obviously several ways uh, in order to do that from day one. Uh, the first one is, you know, meet the team. Uh, it's not because they are not in the office that they cannot meet the team. Um, and typically what we have done is, you know, obviously if it's not possible for the, en uh, the entire company, you can do it by team, but schedule a team video call uh, on the first day with, you know, their direct team members so that they get to know each other, you know, maybe a round table of who is who uh, and, uh, and, you know, set uh, some, some uh, relationship uh, already going on uh, at the beginning so they'll know who they work with and for. Uh, introduce and that's something um, that that we like a lot is introduce a mentor uh, um, in our company it's it's often uh, Joanna that you know is uh, is their mentor and you know also uh, showing them around you know tools like uh, Slack Skype um, and this mentor can uh, help them maneuver around the company if they have a question uh, and they doubt about whom they should ask obviously uh, that person can help. So more about the uh, role orientation, uh, making it clear how uh, they'll be adding value to your team and business from day one. We see, you know, take into consideration that, you know, they have been hired. We see there was, there was a job description, but still, I mean, uh, it's important to reinforce uh, those. So, you know, set goals and expectation uh, from day one. Um, for example, uh, the line manager should, you know, develop and share a uh, task uh, calendar um, after the new hires. Uh, training and onboarding session, but also define short-term and long-term goals, uh, and also explain, you know, if those uh, could be impacted or are impacted by um, the current uh, ongoing crisis, um, but also schedule uh, weekly one-to-one -one meetings to discuss, you know, upcoming project progress and, uh, and if possible, resolves, uh, resolve potential issues. Also making it uh, very clear on uh, what your intentions are in terms of uh, onboarding plan, uh, you know, create as much as possible a tailored uh, onboarding plan uh, where possible um, and ensure that your new uh, starter has, you know, the time schedule uh, with their stakeholders, uh, you know, if you have product engineer, marketing, sales uh, and uh, across different business lines uh, with their first week so uh, they'll know who they work uh, with. And obviously encourage uh, communication and uh, be mindful of how the communication that work with remotely uh, is really, I mean, take into consideration that, you know, when you talk, um, it's fine, but, you know, via messages, it's very easy to in misinterpret tone in, in, in written message. Um, so this is really something, you know, if you have any doubts, uh, you know, instead of uh, on top of the message, I mean, call up the person and, uh, and have a discussion around that.
So uh, if you're trying, uh, if you are uh, 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 struggling to adapt, uh, try and this is you know something that I like a lot is you know, try to put yourself in the shoes of uh, the person. I mean, typically the candidate, um, and you know, taking an em empathic uh, approach uh, that can you know uh, improve your strategy and your reputation. That that, that would definitely help. So. Um, what 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 I can say is you obviously uh, focus your COVID nineteen recruitment energies in the right uh, direction. Good. Uh, so now everyone knows how uh, Gregory looks, um, and uh, you know I would like to uh, I will introduce him in a couple of seconds. But obviously, adapting uh, your talent acquisition uh, process uh, includes you know new tool and uh, and it might be it might be overwhelming at moment um, however it is possible and you know we have uh, Gregory to testify that it is possible uh, Gregory is one of our recent customer as Mike mentioned he's uh, you know the managing director of eBoss Luxembourg uh, and he has implemented skilled uh, in the COVID crisis so Gregory Thank you uh, for joining us today. Uh, we are extremely happy uh, to have you in this webinar. Um, you know, we, we have a couple of questions for you, but maybe if you, you can introduce Ebos yourself in a couple of seconds, that would be great. Uh, and tell us a bit more about yourself. Uh, hi, Nico. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, Mike, and hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be with you this morning also. Uh, even if it's remote, uh, we are missing the croissant, but uh, mm -hmm. we will. We are still happy to be uh, there with you. So, um, yes, I, I'm managing director of EBOS uh, Luxembourg, which is an external uh, call center um, in uh, located in Differdange in the south of the country. So we are neighbors with uh, our friends of the um, skilled. Um, we, we have um, uh, 140 uh, people, professional of um, the customer relation uh, contact, um, which uh, in the past was called call center, but more, now it's more contact center with a lot of different uh, um, uh, channels that are supported uh, so, and digital channels uh, uh, also. And so that's it about uh, Ebos, and we are uh, established uh, since uh, 20 years now um, in Luxembourg. So um, yes, that's it. Thank you, Gregory. And uh, in a, it's truly a very interesting organization. And uh, you know, uh, everyone might wonder. I mean, uh, a call center uh, having to work remotely. Uh, <laughs> uh, what? So I mean, a couple of questions I have is you know. Um, if we can dig deeper into this is, you know, what has your organization done to respond to the COVID outbreak and uh, what has worked well? Well, the thing is that we were lucky that um, a digital was uh, still already part of our DNA before uh, the outbreak. So um, we always believed uh, that we need more digital uh, in the process of the companies, but we also need more human into the digital. So we were prepared uh, for this, for all the corporate staff. So, uh, uh, it was very easy to migrate them to remote working, uh, even, even before the lockout. It was a bit more challenging for uh, our operation staff, the so people handling calls because uh, they handling calls for a lot of different clients. Uh, so you are, and not all clients were at the same level of digitalization. Um, uh, so you have to address um, all the technical issues that uh, each of you uh, uh, faced. Uh, we have to face it for uh, as many times as we have. Uh, uh, customers. So for each and every customer, uh, we need to um, set up the access to the tools and to the VPNs, to the security policies, and to the telephony system. So that was a bit challenging on the technical side. Uh, nevertheless, um, so corporate staff was migrated before the lockout, and uh, within two days, we were able to um, uh, offer remote working to uh, most projects, and it took a, a to 10 days for the uh, most difficult uh, project to, to set up on remote working. So yes, uh, we we have uh, today uh, between 90 uh, and 95% of the staff remote working. 
uh, we kept the uh, site open because um, uh, handling calls um, is something different than normal uh, remote working. You need a calm place and not everybody has a calm place to handle calls from home. And some people prefer to work from office. Uh, and we also um, uh, we understand that we need to consider the fact that not everybody uh, enjoy home working. Um, so that's it. Uh, we have to reorganize the services, uh, of course, uh, like the IT department uh, more focus on um, troubleshooting and solving issues for our employees, our users, more than developments during uh, this period of time because it's um, uh, one of the most stress uh, point for the employees to have an um, uh, issue with the voice or something during the calls. Um, and we also have to reorganize uh, uh, the HR division for us, uh, uh, recruitment staff and, and uh, training team have to change the way of working. So a lot of change to, to implement, but uh, today it's, uh, and since uh, almost the beginning, it's working fine. On a quality perspective, uh, we expected a small decrease, but we have a small improvement. So yeah, that's, uh, that's where we are today. Uh, and it, it's very, I mean, seeing, seeing your organization going uh, uh, almost fully uh, remote is very impressive. And, you know, we see, um, and, and more than ever, you know, we understand, you know, that investing early on in, in technology and uh, and being, you know, uh, uh, digital first uh, has helped you overcome uh, a very challenging uh, uh, time, and uh, and that's that's extremely impressive. So, <laughs> I, I I have to say, I'm uh, even myself very impressed by uh, what has been achieved at uh, Ebos. But you know, um, an important question we have as well is. Uh, how you have how have you handled the implementation of skilled uh, during the COVID nineteen? I mean, you could have put the project on uh, on hold and uh, and you know because there was too many things to do, but you know you decided to pursue the project. So you know, uh, tell us a bit more about this. You know, I think um, in all companies you have a lot of projects and ideas. You never have time to uh, enough time or resources to work on them. And uh, straight from the beginning, uh, uh, we saw that some uh, service um, uh, from us would have a decrease in their workload. So I, I see there an opportunity to uh, to push some project, those project in the box that you never open. Uh, so Skilled was uh, scheduled a little bit later uh, this year, the migration to Skilled. But um, uh, the recruitment division for us uh, was hit by a um, decrease in the activity. Uh, of course, during the two first week of the uh, COVID uh, crisis, a company stopped recruiting, so they don't. Uh, um, our staff had more time, so I say, okay, let's go now. Uh, it's uh, uh, the best time uh, to migrate because uh, the qualified staff to under the migration have more uh, availability now uh, than before. And also it was um, with the fact that uh, everything was doing uh, was uh, remote, uh, such as the recruitment process was remote. Um, we have uh, we wanted to have some of the functionality of skilled available for the recruitment that still goes on during the uh, lockout. So yes, that was a perfect time to uh, to make uh, the a migration for us. Great, um, and I mean one one of the one of the question that uh, that comes up is you know what do you think you know skill can bring to your talent acquisition in the future. <clears throat> Well, in the future, so we are new users of skills. So uh, we are still in a discovery phase of uh, of the tool. And, uh, but uh, of course, what uh, we need um, in the future is to um, the talent. The um, talent pool is something uh, we really need because you mentioned it before. Uh, uh, we are one of these companies who always look at previous candidates when we have an open position uh, to shorten um, uh, our time uh, to hire. Um, so that's something very important for us and also all the e-assessment part um, so um, all the, the personality test is a really cool feature um, but uh, we also uh, want to have um, um, several um, e-assessments that we can uh, 
in part automize or, or, or uh, use when we we need it was one of our challenge in our um, previous um, before covid uh, recruitment process so it was to make uh, to make it fully digital, the assessment, the tests uh, were uh, one of the process that we need to change and to to be able to make it 100% digital. So um, yeah, we we are looking for some features there. I hope uh, Nico and Mike can can push these features. For, <laughs> for... <laughs> Ah, but you, you know, you know how we are. I mean, very close to to our customers. Uh, 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 always, you know, hearing out feedback and uh, and try to always uh, make innovative uh, improvements to to the platform. And you know, something that uh, you have mentioned, uh, and I find extremely interesting, is you mentioned, you know, the, the 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 link between AI and human. And this is really something that uh, not everyone sees. But you know, you see uh, 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 the the technology. It's not. It's not a. a uh, 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 an outcome on its end without uh, the human, and combi by combining the both, you can achieve uh, extraordinary results. And that that's something that maybe you can share a bit about this and what your beliefs on this is. But uh, it's very interesting as a comment. Yeah, I mentioned it. It's, it's uh, our new catchphrase. Uh, is that we want more uh, digital in our life, but we want more human uh, on the internet because um, um, the digital by itself um, uh, is something that um, put a lot of stress on people and can uh, bring a lot of disappointment to clients and uh, and customers, especially in the. Uh, client uh, services uh, business that we are in so um, there is n nothing as bad as having a chat on a website uh, and uh, no answer or a bad answer or only a bot that answer that it doesn't know how to help you <laughs> um, uh, so um, this is one aspect of uh, what I meant the other aspect is that you need qualified people to uh, train to digital because um, skill can uh, provide to us uh, the best um, uh, digital tool um, on the market but if on the other side we don't have human trained to uh, um, to get the most out of the tools then we have issue and in this COVID um, situation um, we um, see that remote working uh, was a struggle for some employees because they don't have enough digital skills mm -hmm. and they struggle with tools, they, they, uh, they don't like chat, they don't uh, feel confident with um, uh, learning in a video uh, conference or they are not um, uh, confident with uh, e-learning uh, platforms and so on. So. Um, Yes, we need a human behind uh, to support people with the tools and to train people uh, with the tools and to make the tools uh, powerful. So AI need to be trained. Um, the modelization uh, can be only be done by a human at the starting point. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's that's what we meant uh, here with this uh, point. Great. I mean, thank you, Gregory, for uh, for sharing all of this. I mean, please uh, stay with us. Um, I'm sure you know the the, the people uh, that are looking up uh, on this webinar will have you know some questions for you. Uh, you know, at the at the end of this webinar, I see that it's already 11:49, uh, so let's allow still a few questions. Uh, so, Mike, I'm giving you uh, the word. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Gregory. Okay. Maybe, thank you, Mike. Stay with us because we, we finish up with the final a final topic, which is of course the post COVID era. Um, I think uh, what we have seen uh, many business lead, well all business leaders, uh, all businesses and uh, companies, whatever size, have been affected by this. Um, I think uh, on our side, Nico and I, we're constantly evaluating with our board, with our uh, with with the managers within within our teams, what to do next, what are the wisest steps. But as this is not a business strategy case, I think we should really focus also on HR. I think what 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 is what we have seen is that uh, HR departments have been in the center of this crisis, at least uh, of, of the feel, of the feeling that we also had is that while suddenly putting everyone remote, all the, the requests, the demands, and and the needs uh, that had to be fulfilled and and covered by by for the people that would not work in the normal offices anymore were handled by um by um 
by HR by HR departments. So I think also for for the post uh, for the post COVID, um, it's very important to align and have future strategies in uh, regarding this and to really um, learn from what we have seen now, where things didn't go well. Maybe implement new uh, digital uh, tools, uh, processing, uh, communication, uh, and, and and being just uh, ready for for this in the future. And one of the main topics, of course, was that came out of this crisis is the remote working and I, I i had the chat with gregory just before i think from our point of view of course is is the remote working uh, gonna gonna come in the future more um before handing the topic it's of course uh, the legislation that plays a role and um gregory maybe you can give your feedback as well or your your, your thoughts on that as well but as we as we said uh as long as the legislations don't allow uh the, the 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 work from home in in a bigger scale i think it will sort of uh be still limited uh and uh i think we we cannot uh take advantage of all the benefits that it still would uh, take by promoting it more uh maybe Gregory, you can share a sentence on that as well for from your point of view yes of course um, um uh, remote working was uh, an option that we considered since a long time but um, um the regulation today in luxembourg make it uh, uh, we lost the flexibility that we we uh, look uh, with remote working first of course you have the, the um, tax um, uh, regulation issue with uh, cross-border workers so uh, we we have people coming from four different countries so four different legislation and so it makes it uh, difficult to make a, a, a massive uh, remote working it's a pity because it's a uh, most easy way to uh, to solve the, the mobility issue uh, and the other one is uh, that we need to schedule the remote working um, so that prevents um, from one of the very nice um, uh, aspect of the remote working to uh, which is the flexibility uh, today uh, my kids are, are, are sick and don't go to school I want to uh, stay with them at home and can make a remote working but no I, um, so it, it's um, difficult on the regulation um, uh, perspective. So we expect, um, so the government uh, reacted uh, quickly, make uh, more flexibility because of uh, the COVID. Uh, but we hope that this topic will be addressed again um, after the COVID. So we have um, 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 a more flexibility to implement remote working uh, in a more massive way with, uh, with our staff. Yeah, exactly. I think we, Nico and I, will follow that, that view. I think uh, uh, all the, the the traveling, the the the, the traffic in general, um, and and the waste of the time, unfortunately, uh, that could be uh, a bit reduced by by offering a bit more work from home, uh, would certainly be a great advantage. So yeah, I think. But but uh, the, this topic uh, is is a, a big a big topic for for the post uh, the, the the after. Covid uh, area for sure. So, so thanks for sharing also your point of view. Yeah, the, the only thing we can see is we see uh, Mr. Bettel, uh, Miss Wilmes, uh, <laughs> Mr. Macron, and uh, and Miss Merkel. Uh, if you're watching us, uh, you know, do something about it. Uh, it can help us all. Yeah. <laughs> So we saw so many people in, in the call, we can start an association to make a more flexible uh, in the remote working. I'm sure a lot of people will be interested in it. Sure, that's a good point. We have a record breaking uh, attendance uh, today. So uh, for all those that look at the work of this from Luxembourg, uh, let's, let's get together and let, let's change it for the good, for sure. Good point. It's already uh, 54, so let's let's allow uh, still a few questions. I mean, just to finish off, obviously, you know, investing in uh, in remote working will have you know far-reaching consequences uh, on the way you know we work after uh, this crisis. Obviously, it's too early to say uh, to what extent uh, you know uh, we will not go back to the old way of working. But businesses, uh, business leaders. Uh, should already think about you know the potential uh, about this investment. I mean, a new operational model based on a higher flexibility, a corporate culture that uh, is more uh, connected internally and externally, uh, and where an analysis of the collaboration can provide valuable data uh, and an alignment. Um, 
uh, on the on the business goals, uh, the new cultural standard uh, and uh, employee expectation, and we see a data driven methods of analysis uh, to get deeper insights into uh, learning new patterns, uh, employee sentiments, etc. I mean, this is uh, something that you might think it's uh, far away, but uh, it's not. You know, and remote working is here to stay, uh, and will more than ever become an integral an integral integral part of you know uh, the way we work. So now you know it's uh, time for companies to prepare uh, for this. You know, back to uh, to normal. Yeah. Well, then uh, let's jump now to the, the Q and A. Yes. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, I think uh, we had a great uh, a great view on on all the the past uh, topics. Uh, I hope you had you had a good insight of how we did it. How how potentially we could. Have help with our tips um, uh, and also Gregory an insight on what it means onboarding a software during during this crisis to to help to help uh, digitalizing because it's a need so um, I think we will go now to to your questions uh, feel free to still put some questions there in case you haven't or uh, remarks um, and then we will be good so um, so, uh, Gregory, if, if you okay. can come back, uh, maybe, you know, you can answer a couple of questions. I mean, uh, we have a question from um, uh, Agnes. Um, so what would be the, the uh, what, what would be great is if you could share some tips uh, on successful onboarding process for new employees during uh, social distancing and what issues, uh, red flags uh, we should avoid. Um, yes. Um, so on our side, we make uh, different um, uh, onboarding process uh, during the, the COVID depending on the size of the onboarding. Is it uh, only one employee or is it a team of uh, five or ten? So uh, you need to reconsider um, um, all the um, uh, all the aspect. Uh, is this uh, experience uh, profile, senior profile, or, or junior profile? And then um, uh, consider uh, how much you can make it uh, remote. On our side, we had some onboarding fully uh, remote, so uh, we we did not see these people yet, but they already work for us uh, and handling calls uh, because um, everything from recruitment uh, until uh, production uh, is doable remotely. For some uh, other um, uh, uh, recruitment, we uh, add a part of it on site. Uh, depending again for more junior profiles um, or more uh, complex um, uh, trainings, um, it was um, we have few days on site and the rest being made uh, remotely. But um, you, the philosophy, the approach is uh, everything which can be done remotely must be done remotely. Uh, um, so we try to follow this. Great. Uh, thank you, Gary. I mean, we have a, a, another question from uh, Ilona. Uh, um, hello there. Uh, maybe you could suggest some platforms uh, where you can find talent uh, talent uh, laid off during the uh, COVID crisis. Uh, I found a couple, uh, but for the US and not for Europe. Um, Ali, Ilona, maybe I can answer this one. Um, I'm, I'm not sure there is a, a platform specifically for this in uh, in Europe, and that's a, that's a good point. Um, more than ever, and what is important is, you know, those people will be uh, on the look for um, jobs. And what is key is obviously, you know, the way you will differentiate yourself. So, you know, the way you will be em 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 empathic about, you know, uh, th those people and, you know, have the strongest uh, employer brand. I mean, this is the key. Uh, having, you know, the, 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 the right communication, um, having the right communication and let them know that you are hiring and that you can support, uh, you know, them uh, and their onboarding process throughout uh, this um, COVID um, crisis. And more than ever, I mean, you know, advertise on the, the different job boards, but also, you know, run uh, the necessary sponsored ads to show that pe to people, to candidates that, you know, you are uh, uh, looking for new talent and that your company uh, is uh, is growing. Uh, you know, don't hesitate also, and this is not something that, you know, HRT often do, but, you know, don't hesitate to write 
uh, a very uh, insightful piece of content on your, the blog of your organization, uh, explaining why uh, you hire uh, people and uh, uh, during those uh, tough time and uh, and how you're advising you know people that have been laid off by uh, the COVID crisis uh, to actually overcome this. Uh, this will generate traffic and actually bring people uh, to uh, to you. Nico, uh, just just yeah. on, on this topic because I think it's important. Uh, I don't know where, where it is located, but I know here in Luxembourg we have uh, the the ADEM, so the employer yes. uh, body for for Luxembourg has put a very nice job board together. It's called Job Switch. Uh, it's specifically for well, mm -hmm. I don't know specifically, but it's for people that have changed jobs or want to change jobs in this current situation. Uh, I think it's a very nice initiative. But it's unfor unfortunately in this case just specifically yeah. for yeah. But it, and, I've seen it on the news and, and it's, it's very powerful. It's all people uh, inside uh, who are uh, unemployed, um, volunteers, and people who uh, are in chômage partial also, uh, because uh, we have a high proportion of chômage partial during the crisis yeah. uh, on this switch uh, portal. Yeah, so that's and more than ever, I mean, Europe should come as a as a as a whole, you know, to be able to uh, to provide those kind of platforms. But you know, if uh, if if you can also, and there is probably more initiatives in uh, in multiple countries, or maybe even write a, a piece of article, uh, you know, gathering all the the different platforms uh, from the different countries. Uh, I can be sure that this will generate a lot of traffic and uh, and will attract you uh, talent. Um, I see that it's already uh, 12.01, uh, you know, time is flying fast. Uh, we still have uh, a lot of questions uh, to answer, but, you know, uh, we will also be mindful of the time. Uh, so what I propose is that, you know, people have, you know, don't hesitate to, uh, to reach out to us um, on our uh, website. You know, if you need uh, Gregory's information uh, and, and details, you know, I'm sure, you know, we can provide those and, uh, and, uh, and he will be more than happy to answer some questions. Um, obviously, Gregory, uh, first of all, thank you very much, uh, you know, to have allocated us some time. Um, thank you we are happy to have you on board as a customer uh, and we are sure that, you know, you will be a very happy long-term customer. Uh, and to everyone that has joined this webinar, we, will, we would obviously like to uh, thank everyone for attending and uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us if uh, there's anything that we can help you with uh, during those times and after. Yeah, so be safe. Thanks all. Thanks, Gregory. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Gregory. Thank you, Gregory. Have thank a great you, everybody. Day. Stay safe. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.